Hey, this is Luke Simons with Salt Strong. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to catch redfish, snook, and trout during the winter time after a cold front. And we're talking about those days about one to three days after a cold front, where it's of course cold out there, the temperature drops significantly, the, the winds are ripping from the north in, in most cases. And, uh, and although it is sunny out, it's just so windy and cold that it's oftentimes uncomfortable. And uh, it's actually the type of day that I used to just completely cancel trips, thinking that it was just too cold for the fish to be biting. But, uh, but I could not have been more wrong. The fish are out there. They are feeding. It just takes uh, some unique strategies to target them. And in this video, we're going to be covering one of my favorite wintertime tactics, and that's to fish docks. We're going to be doing 100% artificial lures. You, of course, don't need live bait to catch fish. So we're, we're going to be going to a brand new area that, that none of us had ever fished before. During the winter time, it was the day after a cold front. And, and I'll be showing you exactly you know, what we caught, of course, in this video, uh, you know, how we caught it. And, and, and as you're watching the docks, you, know, you can just take note of the, the types of docks that were, that were holding fish. But you don't need to worry about analyzing the docks to try to figure out where we were because at the very end, I'll actually get on Google Maps and I'll show you exactly where we fished. That way you can see the, the type of structure that I was looking for uh, when pre-planning the night before the trip. Uh, that way, again, if, if you're gonna go out uh, after a cold front, you can look for the same types of things in your area to, to find where the fish are in your area. And if you happen to be in the St. Pete region, then you're gonna be getting uh, some uh, really good fishing areas uh, because again, I'll show you exactly where we were. Anyhow, I hope you really enjoyed this video. It, it was actually filmed a day that, that we met with a winner of one of our online tournaments. This is uh, Chris Olt from Largo. He, he won a Yeti cooler. And instead of just, just FedExing it over there to him, we, we decided it'd be much more fun. It's only, it's only about a 30 to 35 minute drive away. A whole lot more fun just to drive over there, hand deliver it, have the opportunity to meet Chris, but, but more importantly, have the opportunity to fish with him. Uh, what we didn't plan on though, was the fact that a cold front came in the, the night before our planned trip and, uh, and, and didn't ruin the trip, but it certainly made it tough. Um, however, as you'll see, we, we ended up having a really good day out there. It was a brand new area that none of us had ever fished before. So really fun day of exploration fishing, uh, even better when you, when you have some, uh, some good success. So we'll kick it over to the video right now. All right, we're here bright and early in Tampa and we are about to head over and surprise, kind of surprise, he knows we're coming. Yep. Uh, but we're going to take him out fishing him. Mr. Chris Olt, he won the last month's Strong Angler Challenge. Maverick is, uh, is ready to go. Let's do it. Luke, I am your brother. So we're almost here. There's the cooler. We're, uh, we're hoping we're going to catch some fish today. It is cold. We went over the bridge and it is windy as can be. But doggone it, we're going to give us our salt strong best and uh, hopefully have a good old time. Pa -pow! Pinellas County boat ramps. We are here, dude. Chris, what's up, man? How's it going? Pleasure man? to meet you, buddy. You too. Congratulations, dude. Thank you, man. We've got the cooler here. We've got Chris Alt, winner of last month's Strong Anger Challenge by the powers vested in me. Here is the old Yeti cooler, certified salt strong front right and there. back. Nice. Congratulations, Thank you, dude. Hey, thank you guys. Good work. Appreciate it. Get yeah. that thing even heavier. Yeah. It's all strong. <laughs> Woohoo! Now we're gonna go out trying to kiss some fish. Let's do it. Let's go. Good boy Chris out here. I haven't been out yeah. more than 10 minutes yet. Ready? One, two, three. Wait. Shade up there looks good. Yeah. 
Luke the Dark Dipper. Oh, that's a nice fish. He got, got him out. Got him out of the hard Come stuff. It's a solid. I think it's a redfish. That's what it looked like. Oh, let me get around. Back there. Yeah, that's a solid red. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is the biggest fish of the day. Uh, yeah. That thing definitely had me wrapped around that pole too. I got lucky there. Yeah, I seen it pop off. Yeah. I seen the line pop. I could I could feel it. Yeah, just rubbing. Just rubbing. Man, what a, what a fish. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Nice, Luke. Luke, you're here with another one. No bananas on board. Definitely bad luck. Now for the fun, I'm going to show you exactly where we were fishing uh, that day. And, and in case you're not familiar with the, the St. Petersburg area, well, this is uh, this is overall Tampa Bay. As you can see here, very large bay on the uh, west coast of Florida. I'll zoom out so you can get a little bit more perspective. So we're going to zoom on in. And, uh, and the area we were fishing was really, uh, I guess it's north uh, northwest St. Pete. The, uh, the address is St. Pete, but it's really closer to the beaches. We were fishing this boat ramp in this little Bay Pines area. And uh, this is a nice boat ramp. It's in a, in a really nice looking uh, state park. And it's, uh, it's the War Veterans Memorial Park. Uh, so if you need uh, directions, you can just uh, look that up. And you can see this, here's the ramp, nice boat ramp. There's, there's four different, uh, different slots, and uh, two of which can, uh, can do multiple trailers. So even on a busy day, I, I'm sure this is a quick boat ramp. That was my uh, one and only time uh, going there uh, so far. But, uh, but again, nice ramp. You do have to pay for it, though. It is a, I think it was like a 5 or $6 fee to, uh, to park there. But again, well worth it. Super nice ramp. And again, this, uh, this wind was just ripping from the, the northeast. So my first step was, of course, to go to weather.com to see what the forecast was. Saw that the wind was going to be very strong from the, the northeast. So, and I was in this uh, little Maverick with three people. So I, I didn't want to go too far because we would have been getting wet. Because uh, that wind was certainly strong enough to make this bay uh, pretty darn rough. So what I did is I just looked, I just wanted to find some shelter and looking for docks. So I just looked immediately across from the, from the boat ramp and uh, saw these nice looking little docks here. And, and, uh, and really the, the things I was looking for was just some sort of unique bottom structure. Just utilize these online maps to find unique bottom structure to find the, the, rain, the areas of docks that most likely have the best fish. And those, of course, are the docks with the most underwater structure near them. And uh, for instance, you can see some nice, nice looking uh, dark, uh, dark ridges here around these docks. You can see this is a rock 
a nice rock wall with some dark ridges, some of which are rocks, some is grass. Uh, very important thing to see. And in fact, one of the redfish is caught uh, right here. You can see there's a nice little dark area right before this dock. Um, the wind was was hitting it pretty hard, even though there wasn't much uh, much room. That's where you can see how windy it was, where even this dock right here was getting blown out. But uh, managed to get a, a cast in there and caught a little redfish. It was that five spotter. But uh, but where we started though is uh, knowing the direction of the wind and how strong it was. I wanted just to find the calmest area possible, so we started right here in, in this uh, in this nook. And, and what really caught my eye was was really most of all just the fact that it was going to be calm. But but we did I could see that there was some nice little structure around these docks. Got a little bit shallow around this one, and uh, and turns out we started fishing this one, and then it was by our fourth dock. Uh, this right here in this edge is where I caught the first redfish. It was about a 24 uh, inch or so, just nice, you know, mid upper slot redfish. Again, right here on this dock. So it didn't take long at all. We started finding fish, and uh, and and really the pre-trip planning. I was just going down. I noted that there was you know some dark structure here. Uh, I knew that was going to be some sort of bottom structure. Uh, sure enough, there was. It ended up being a nice oyster bed, along with some grass just on the outside of it. And uh, that snook was caught right on this. It was caught right on the uh, right about 10 feet off the dock in this little uh, off this oyster bar. And uh, and again, uh, that was just the stuff I was looking for that night. You can see there's can just continued structure on these docks. Looks nice, bottom contour. Uh, this ended up being a oyster bed. Uh, looked really good. We didn't catch anything on that though, unfortunately. Uh, the big redfish was caught right here on this dock. Ended up being an overslot redfish. It had me wrapped around the uh, the piling, uh, and, and thankfully the uh, the ten pound braid didn't uh, didn't give way, and uh, got a nice nice redfish in the boat. So really, we continued fishing this entire dock line, and we got all the way till right around here is where I noted that it, it just wasn't wasn't quite as fishy looking and by the time we got here the wind was so strong where even even hugging the shoreline uh, just wasn't uh, wasn't happening and we ended up uh, going a little bit further north and we went away from docks and just started finding started exploring some areas uh, areas back in the uh, in this region the lure that we had the best luck with that day was this uh, this gulp shrimp this is a, a three inch gulp shrimp on a on a small jig head, and this is a one eighth ounce jig head. That's my favorite for fishing docks in the one to to five uh, feet of depth range. And this is the new penny color, which is typically my favorite during the winter time. Uh, however, the the day before that trip, I bought the the natural color, which is kind of like a greenish on top and a white on the bottom, and and that's what I was using, and it was working incredibly well. To see exactly how to rig it, you can go to our our website saltstrong.com. This is a, a public public article where you can see exactly how to rig, you can see the pros and cons, but then a, a detailed video on, on how to rig uh, this bait. But really more importantly, the fact that you're still here means that you are interested in getting better at, at just more catching snook, redfish, and trout more consistently throughout the year. And, and for that, we have a couple private membership areas. So over here in the, in the members section at the top, top right, we have uh, two different courses I'd like to just briefly uh, explain to you. And uh, one is the Inshore Slammer, which is really a group of short videos, uh, much shorter than this one, that's very targeted, that, that covers uh, the, the full range of things needed to, to know to, to consistently go out there and, and catch slams throughout the year without even having to waste time and money on live bait. And I'll click on it so that you can see, you know, see what's in there. Of course, it starts with a welcome. We go into module one, which talks about different fishing lines, the best knots to use, the best rods to use, the best reels. And other miscellaneous equipment. And this, of course, goes into the rods not to get, and, and reels not to waste money on. So you'll be saving a lot of money by, by, uh, by look by listening and watching those videos. Number two is just the artificial lures, the types of lures to have at your disposal that will cover all different aspects uh, of inshore fishing. Module three, most importantly, covers how to find fish, uh, pre-trip planning, uh, ties and currents, understanding um, you know when when to do what. Um, and then using online maps, sort of like this video uh, we, we, you just saw, but much more detailed because they go into finding snook specifically, redfish, trout. And this final one is my absolute favorite because it really shows how to use online maps to find specific areas that you're more likely to catch slams, where you can catch snook, redfish, and trout all in one spot, and of course only using artificial lures. So that's that's really the uh, the, the slammer. Um, the other one, which is the the plus package, the full plus package, 
uh, actually has access to inside reports, which are uh, which are reports just like what we just saw, that, that where I show exactly where I was fishing and, and explain why I was there, what I used, and show exactly, you know, on Google Maps, you, I'll show you exactly where I catch fish. That way you can apply those same trends to whatever region uh, you're fishing. And once I see a, a lot of members in a certain area, it doesn't matter where it is, I'm going to go there and, and, uh, and film the results. I'll go do some exploration fishing, film the pre-planning, film what happens, show what works, what doesn't work, and specifically show the exact spots that I catch and see the most fish. So, so anyhow, that's just a quick overview of the two membership packages, the Inshore Slammer, which is the detailed tutorials, the insider reports, which comes with the plus membership where you really get everything, but the plus membership allows you to also get the insider reports, uh, which again show the exact locations where I catch fish throughout the year and how I catch them. So anyhow, just want to let you know about those. Uh, I'll have links to get them down below. I uh, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again soon. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong and wet a line today There's nothing better on a Saturday night Than an ice cold beer and a, a fish fry And talking about them big ones that got away Cause fishing, it's in my soul It was passed down to me from